Mr. Speaker, I want to read to this Honorable House part of the Caribbean Information Credit Rating Services Limited, Carrie Chris Ratings Update on the economy of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, this document is not the truth that we believe or we want to believe, but really the truth. The truth as envisaged by independent experts. So Mr. Speaker, when you hear about the rumors that the economy is in collapse and this economy is being badly managed, and you hear the delusions of people who have lost government and who refuse to understand that they have lost it. I'm going to read today to you, and I'm going to make it a document of the House for all those who have eyes to see and who can read. We will make it available to all of them so they can see, Mr. Speaker, that their delusions and their wish of doom and gloom on this country because they have lost power. The wishes of doom and gloom are not going to come to a reality. This report will show that the St. Lucian economy and St. Lucia's credit rating is stable and there are signs that it, should, it will improve in the long run. On September 14th, Carrie Chris reaffirmed the issue sovereign credit ratings of BBB minus foreign and local currency nation ratings on its regional rating scale assigned to the government of St. Lucia. A stable outlook was maintained. Rating sensitivity factors, factors that could lead to an improvement in the ratings and or outlook include substantial changes in the debt levels leading to a debt to GDP ratio below 65%, Achievement of a balanced budget over the medium term, sustained real GDP growth of the order of 3% per annum or more above pre-COVID-19 level. Factors that could lead to a lowering of the ratings and or outlook include significant changes in the fiscal position leading to a fiscal deficit larger than 50% of GDP, Substantial changes in the debt levels leading to a sustained debt to GDP in excess of 90% alongside a decline in debt servicing to below two times. Rating rational. Caribbean Information and Credit Rating Services Limited, CARICRIS, has reaffirmed the ratings of BBB minus foreign currency and local currency ratings on its regional rating scale for the several rated debt issues of the government of St. Lucia. These ratings indicate that the level of creditworthiness of these debt obligations are judged in relation to other debt obligations in the Caribbean is adequate. Caricris has also maintained a stable outlook. The stable outlook is based on the improvement in fiscal performance and in debt to GDP from the COVID-19 shock in 2020. Debt ratios have now returned to around the pre-COVID level, supporting the debt to GDP analysis within the current rating category limit is the expectation that it should remain below 70% by the end of 2023-24. Additionally, strong rebound in tourism, as well as the con continuous investment flows are expected to support balance of payments health. However, the downside risks to the outlook include high energy prices, which can negatively impact fuel excise revenue, and a rising level of criminality, which can dampen St. Lucia's tourism attractiveness, increases, increases business costs, and reduce the everyday welfare of citizens. The factors supporting the ratings are rating drivers, key strengths, monetary and exchange rate stability underpinned by membership in the quasi-currency board arrangements, key risk, fiscal performance can be erratic in the current high, in, high inflationary environment because while debt to GDP benefits from high nominal GDP impacts, 
fiscal spending can balloon with large social transfers and reduce fuel excise receipts. Sound financial sector despite COVID-19 challenges. Debt to GDP, key risk. Debt to GDP is projected to remain above the target of 60% over the medium term, requiring a twin strategy of fiscal consolidation and GDP growth to accelerate decline below the target. Key strengths. Economic activity is wider, economic activity is wider than most sub-regional pairs. Although dependent on buoyancy in tourism, However, consistent but low growth in GDP is expected in the coming years. Rising and persistent crime can derail risk, can derail political focus, and can be disruptive to fiscal and investment planning. Economic income and economic structure, BBB plus, adequate. St. Lucia's nominal GDP remains the largest in the organization of Eastern Caribbean states subregion at US 2.3 billion in 2022. The economic base continues to be among the most diversified in the OECS. The three largest components of real GDP for 2022 were accommodation and food services 18.2%, real estate activities 10.7%, and wholesale and retail trade 10.6%. However, while this diversity exists as per industry classifications, tourism-related activities remain the lead driver of economic activity. Additionally, tourism continues to employ a significant share of the labor force. Therefore, factors which affect tourism can have large ripple effects throughout much of the economy. Real GDP improved by 18.1% in 2022 when compared to the prior year's improvement of 12.2%. Improved GDP performance in 2022 was primarily due to strong activity in the tourism sector. Tourism gained from the complete relaxation of COVID-19 restrictions on travel, which allowed capitalization of global pent-up travel demand. GDP additionally benefited from spillover effects of other sectors. Most economic activity categories improved in 2022. The most notable expansions were in accommodation and food services, 58.5%, wholesale and retail trans transport trade up by 23.7%, and transport and storage up by 19.3%. There were also favorable outturns for manufacturing, up by 11.4%. And agriculture, livestock, and forestry up by 9.8%. However, construction fell 12.6%, and financial services output was slightly lower by 0.9%. The tourism industry grew during the year as a result of continued recovery in stay over, in stay -over arrivals. Likewise, likewise, there was an improvement in cruise arrivals. Silver arrivals rose year on year as a result of continued economic recovery in source markets and a full rollback of travel restrictions. The U.S. market grew by 38% in 2022 and was higher than the 2019 level by 9.6%. The U.K. market rose by 146.3% but remained marginally below the 2019 level levels. Both Canada and the Caribbean materially improved by 220% and 455% respectively. However, they were 48.8 and 63% below 2019 levels. Canada is a seasonal market and so more acutely affected by the season's weather and economic and flight availability factors while the Caribbean suffers from lack of air access. Overall strong growth in stayover arrivals was due to increased U.S. elif in 2022. Hotel occupancy rose to 70.4% in 2022 from 48.8% in the prior year. Cruise arrivals increased by 285.2% in 2022, which was approximately 43 0.9% of 2019 levels. Favorable cruise itineraries contributed. There was a 490.8% rise in yacht arrivals. The wholesale and retail trade, 
and transport and storage sectors grew by 23.7% and 19.3% respectively, arising out of the higher visitor arrivals. Though the manufacturing sector increased by 11.4% on account of higher demand from hotels and in the export market, the industry was faced with challenges such as high cost of imported inputs and, and electricity and fuel. Agriculture rose by 9.8% in 2022, notwithstanding being negatively impacted by supply chain issues. Banana output rebounded, increasing by 11.3%. There was growth in domestic and regional tourism demand, despite a decline in the UK banana market. The UK market challenge was due to concerns about food quality and rising shipping costs, and as a result, exports to this market were suspended. The construction industry declined by 12.6% due to reduced activity in both public and private buildings. Public sector expenditure declined by 33.2% as major projects were completed in 2021 as well as in the first half of 2022, coupled with delay in the, in the implementation of the Millennium Highway and West Coast Rehabilitation. The sector's activity included the Iwanora International Airport Development Project, which is the largest public sector development, the completion of the Road Improvement and Maintenance Program, the, re the reconstruction of the cul de -Sac Bridge, school improvement works on the EQIP, the Constituency Development Program, and the Viewford Water Supply. Private sector construction activity included work on the Gulf Coast at Cabot, St. Lucia Resort, the Dreams and Zortree Hotel in Miku, the Orange Group Plaza, Ville expansions at the Sandals Halcyon Beach Resort, and renovations at the Windjammer Landing and Beach Resorts. The labor market improved in 2022 as a result of the continued recovery in economic activity. The unemployment rate was 16.5%, which was the lowest in several recent years. Youth unemployment was particularly acute in prior years. While it still remains high, the Government of Solutions has created a youth economy agency to, to encourage entrepreneurship and create opportunities for growing GDP and exports. Additionally, the expansion of the business process outsourcing industry creates additional op employment opportunities. The offshore medical schools industry also can reduce unemployment through direct operational activities and construction of physical infrastructure. The government of Telusia intends to grow the edu business industry. Improvements in the ease of doing business have been forthcoming through financial structural reforms, such as credit report legislation, foreclosure legislation, bankruptcy and solvency legislation, and secured transactions collateral registry. Mr. Speaker, as I said, I will make this entire document of the House. So allow me to continue to read, Mr. Speaker. Carrie Chris believes that the economy of St. Lucia will continue its resurgence in 2023. Supported again by robust output from the tourism sector, arrivals are projected to reach 92% and 96% of 2019 levels in 2023 and 2024, respectively. There is intended harmonizing of tourism incentives into a single tourism development bill. Carrie Chris believes that this is a prudent initiative to continue, consolidate and deepen tourism gains. Notwithstanding slow implementation, especially in public construction projects, an upturn, an upturn in the construction sector is expected. New works under the HIRDP are projected to significantly fuel activity. Real GDP is projected to grow by 4.8% in 2023. However, downside risk to growths are significant and include the emergence of dangerous COVID-19 variants, rising levels of criminality, tropical storms, hurricane impacts, inflation and recessionary conditions, dampening tourism sector markets, demand for travel, and slow growth in partner countries. Based on the, based on the improvements in real GDP over the last two years, 
Governor said Lucia's output performance is trending towards achievement of the GDP rating sensitivity factor. CARICRIS may update its outlook or ratings in future review periods if progress persists. Mr. Speaker, then, as I said, the entire report will be made available for those who can read to read. Further, so, Mr. Speaker, it shows, Mr. Speaker, that the lies and the misinformation that is peddled by people who try to create the impression that the economy is a mess, Mr. Speaker. Kari Chris not has shown this is completely different and I'm not going to hide any part of it. The entire document is available for everyone to see, Mr. Speaker. So I hope, Mr. Speaker, that the public of St. Lucia understands that what passes in St. Lucia for opposition is slander, maliciousness, envy, and chagrin pouvoir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.